What's going on YouTube? Today I'll be giving you a basic example of how to use Qt Creator. So let me load it. This is the main layout when you first open it up. As on the left side you can see you have tutorials. Also on the bottom there are examples that you can load up and see how to implement it, the examples. Then we're going to create a new project. So click project, create project. You want to build a graphical user interface. So click Qt widget project. And then choose Qt graphical user interface application. We're just going to name this project demo. We want to build a desktop application, so make sure that's checked. Over here is the the main files that you'll be using. You can rename it to anything you want, but for this demonstration, I'm going to keep the basics. And then project management, you can just hit done. On the left side, you can see your project file, with, which links all the files together, your headers and source files in your form. Double click on the main window UI. On the left side, you can see all the widgets that you can use. Let's go ahead and drop down a horizontal slider and a spin box. Go ahead and add a button on there. Up here at the top, you have it, this uh, component where you can edit your widgets. Over here, you can link your signals and slots. You can edit buddies. I'm not really sure what that is used for yet because I just started using Qt Creator. And then edit the tab order, which way, which components you want to be selected first when you hit tab. So first, let's go ahead and I'm at, first I'm gonna show you a demonstration on how to link signals and slots together. So click edit signals and slots, and once you select that, you can see it changes when you hover your mouse over the components. It turns red if you click and drag the horizontal slider over here to the spin box you get a pop-up box on the left side is for your signals and on the right side is for your slots so we want on value changed we want to set the value of the spin box and click OK and if you want to delete signals and slots that you created you can just go down here select which, which one you want to delete and hit the minus sign Let's go ahead and run its application and see how it works so far. As you can see, the spin box is getting the values from the horizontal bar. Down here on the bottom right is the properties for your for your widgets. If, let me go back. To edit widgets. You can pretty much set like your buttons name, add some text to an edit box and so on. Or you can change the values of the horizontal slider or the spin box. As you can see the default value for the horizontal slider is zero. The max amount is 99, and the minimum is 0. I think it's, uh, the default is 99 for the spin box, too. If I had the horizontal bar, I changed the value for the maximum of 200, and I moved the slider, and it was interacting with the spin box, it would still only go up to 99, because that's the max value for it. Let's click on the push button. Uh, change the text to clear and we're going to link this over to the spin box and 
And when the button is clicked, we want to clear the text out of the spin box. Click OK. Let's run it. Let's change some values, hit the button, and the text is gone. And that's just the uh, pre-built-in signals and slots for the components. But now I'm going to show you how you can actually implement your own uh, slots. Also, if you look over here on the objects, you can see the name of your components. And under your properties windows, you can also rename them. It's a good practice to rename your, your components so you know which one you're actually using. But this is just a demonstration, so I'm not going to really rename any of the components. Let's go ahead and put two text boxes on the form. So we get one, one line edited and another line edit. Let's go ahead and add another button. We name it transfer. And what we're basically going to do is transfer text from the left edit, edit box to the right edit box. I'm so used to programming in Delphi, Delphi, so I call them edit boxes. But it's the same thing, text boxes, edit boxes. So let's go ahead and click on edit so we can implement some code. Right here is the main window user interface. And it just it's pretty much an XML file. And it just places all your components and widgets all together and just set the positions for them and so on. But let's go to the main what uh, main window header. And we're going to add public slots to the class. Get that down some. And we're going to name a method transfer. It's very important that you already know C++, else you'd be, just be wasting time. Because pretty much this is just a user interface, so you still need to know C++. I advise you to learn classes. Okay, that's one of the main things about QT is classes. All right, so let's go to the main window CPP source file. And let's go ahead and create the method that we added into the that we added in the header file. So void main window transfer. And we want it the line edit, the first line edit. Actually, I'm going to do the second one. Edit two. And what this method does is set the text for the line the line edit. And let's do user interface, line edit, text. And what this method does is returns the text. So it's going to return a Q, uh, QT string. All right. And now that we have this, we got to actually make a connection with the signals and slots so this will work. So we're going to type connect. You can see right up here, it gives you a display with all that you need. So. And since I added that second button on there, it's push button two. Add a signal for it. 
when you type signal in an open parentheses, it gives you a list of the uh, methods that you can choose from. And we want to do on click. And we're just going to be working with the form, so we can just type this, because that just returns the pointer to the form. That's why I say classes are real important, because just basic knowledge of C++, you already know what this means. Alright, and then we're going to implement our function. Type in slot, and see how it already pulls it up for me? Transfer. Okay, let's run its uh, program. Since I'm on Mac, I hit Command R to run the programs. But you can go under Build and Run to. But you also have to build all, but I set my properties. So once I do run a project, it automatically saves and runs it. Oops. See, I made a simple mistake. I added brackets on here. And I'm just doing method. Well, just implementing the header. So let's go ahead and run it now. Hello, YouTube. Transfer. And there you go. It transfers over. This is just a basic demonstration. I hope this helped y'all out. And I'll see you next time.